Hey everybody, welcome to another video and today we're going to be talking about the differences between certain types of bags, okay? That right there is my lightweight, small-ish bug out bag, okay? That's something that I would keep in my truck box uh, with the essentials to survive if I had to be uh, away from home for an extended period of time with nowhere to go and I may have to uh, be homeless for a while or whatever okay so I have all the essential tools and things that I need to survive out in the elements or uh, to survive uh, and protect myself in case of attack or some type of disaster so that's my bug out bag, okay? And uh, also, <clears throat> as you can see, it's not overly big, but for its size, it is pretty heavy. So um, it's more of a vehicle bag, semi, you know, go far as you can with your vehicle until you run out of gas or what have you not, and then go on foot kind of bag, okay? Um, in a real situation, real disaster, that's what may wind up happening to you. You know, in a nationwide disaster, nationwide situation, you're not going to be able to get gas. You're going to have you're going to go to a gas station, there's going to be lines of lines and lines of people waiting to get gas, and while you're sitting there, uh you may be overcome by disaster and and whatever is happening so you may wind up having to go far as you can away from the disaster areas and once you run out of gas that's it you're on foot you're taking that bag with you and good luck to you okay that is not a get home bag okay and i'll explain that in a second that right there is a recreational bushcraft bag, okay? And that backpack right there is full of little goodies for me to go into the woods and play, build a shelter, build a fire, you know, make a, something to eat. That chest rig contains my self-defense items and some bushcraft tools. If I want to carve... If I want to uh, do some uh, light bushcrafting uh, techniques and stuff. Um, and uh, if I happen to come across some dangers in the wilderness, uh, that also houses my self-defense items like sidearm, non-lethal mace, and things like that. Okay? Now, that right there is an EDC pouch. It is contains most of your so-called urban uh, aids, like uh, urban uh, EDC stuff, like uh, power bricks, phone chargers, electronic device chargers, uh, and things like that, a selfie stick, and a uh, few items that can come in handy in an urban situation, okay? And that uh, pouch right there is part of my EDC that all that EDC pouch also sits in the car along with the bug out bag because I don't always carry that around unless I'm touring or visiting somewhere and I know I'm going to be on foot walking around a lot okay but that EDC pouch is always on my belt all right now let's go into why that bug out bag is never a get home bag. All right. First of all, when something happens where you got to get home, a disaster happens around your area that you're working or visiting at. Let's take, for instance, uh, 9 11. Okay. People who were downtown Manhattan and those airplanes struck, the first thing that happened was everybody. Uh, as soon as they realized the full potential danger, began to walk away from the danger. And they walked and walked and walked. 
okay? Many of them literally had to walk out of Manhattan, okay? Um, you're not going to be, unless you're in top physical condition, be able to wear that and walk and walk and walk, especially when your environment is dusty, uh, hot, okay, smoky, okay, uh, the air is full of pollutants, and everyone is just running around like their head, uh, like a chicken with a head cut off. Uh, you have obstacles to go around over and under, and uh, you know, with that thing on, you're gonna be overcome by heat exhaustion, exhaustion, uh, lack of fresh air, whatever. Uh, all kinds of physical problems can occur carrying something heavy as that, okay? And that's not really that heavy. But things become very heavy when you have to walk and walk and walk, okay? Another thing why that's never a get-home bag is that's too conspicuous, all right? If you're wearing a backpack like that, uh, you better have obvious signs of being able to take care of yourself in other words you better be carrying something that tells other people hey don't mess with me i am armed to the teeth and if you come near me in a threatening manner to take my bag or to try to rob me i can take care of myself okay and you don't really want to put yourself in that kind of situation because now you're in position of making that decision uh, of having to defend yourself protect yourself and uh, fight your way out okay when you have a gun on you when you have something of value or something of usefulness to other people uh, there's some people that will literally try to take that bag and your gun and whatever you have on you away from you so they can use it or they can profit from it during a disaster, okay? Uh, yes, um, many, pl many other places um, in, the, in the countryside or whatever, people may be not like that. It may take a lot more for people to become uh, bad like that. But if you, if, you, if you never lived in a major city in the United States, uh, you have a rude awakening when a disaster hits in a major city, uh, and you have to start walking and you realize you're wearing a big target on your back when you have something like that on you. OK, so so that's why that's never a get home bag. OK, all of you guys that collect that stuff right there. Think about what you're doing. OK, think about what you name your bags. Is that a go get home bag in an urban situation? No, it's not. OK. That is not a get home bag or a bug out bag or nothing. That is a bushcraft entertainment for my amusement bag. Okay, right there. Now, mind you, I can use that and survive in the wilderness uh, for several days just using those things that are in that bag. Okay, so I mean, in a technically, yes, that can be a survival bag. Okay, if push come to shove, that stuff right there can be an essential part of your being able to survive in the wilderness. Okay, right there. So now, all of these things right here, when a disaster hits and you have to get home, okay, you want the bare essential items for your safety. And for you to be able to get home. And what is that? Okay. And what is the best ideal bag for you to have to store all that in. And still be able to carry that bag. And not be conspicuous. And be able to fly under the, ra uh, fly under the radar. Okay. Now I'm going to show you. Everybody know what kind of bag this is. This is a drawstring, drawstring bag. Okay, it's a bag that people usually uh, carry to carry their uh, extra pair of shoes to work or some gym clothes, um, 
some overnight stuff or just to carry some uh, books or in, in, or maybe to just have this uh, with them uh, in case they need a, a bag and they break it out and put whatever they're going to like groceries that they bought uh, on the way home. If they're if they're riding a, a bicycle or walking home and stuff like that. OK, a very incom un inconspicuous bag. When you carry a bag like this, people normally don't associate a bag like this with anything in there that's of value. Okay, so that is a perfect bag for you to carry. Okay, on your back. I know the strings are kind of painful if you have anything of weight. It's going to be painful to have this uh, over your shoulder for a long period of time. But there are bags like this with much thicker strings that feel a little more padded and more comfortable to wear. And I, I have that bag uh, that I, uh, I have a bag like that made by Adidas that I took on a cruise with me and went touring with. And the whole time I was wearing that bag, it was very comfortable. But it's a bag like this that you want in your car, at your workplace, or um, wherever that you're going to be when a disaster hits. More than likely, the best place for this is in, in the trunk of your car or in the back of your car. And when something happens, you get to your car and break out all the things that you need out of there. Okay? Now, if you're going to have something like that in a truck box or like something like that, with that stuff in, the, in your car, when a disaster hits... Just take out the stuff that you're going to wear, put on your belt or whatever, and leave that bag. You know, just take the essentials, tools, um, masks, helmets, eye protection, your firearms, whatever, extra ammunition, whatever. Whatever you can carry on your belt, in your pockets, take it out of the bag and start walking and leave that behind. I know that's going to be painful to do because there you're probably going to think that you're leaving stuff behind that you might need. But guarantee you, carrying that with you is going to wear you out and it's going to slow you down. And uh, at the end of the day, it's painting a big magnet and target on you for others to come and uh, mess with you. Now... Let's move that to the side. What do we have in this bag? All right. Now, let's talk about the situation. 9-11. Riots. Okay. Chemical. A fire. Or even terrorist uh, disaster. Okay. All that is covered in this bag. Okay. Number one. You have to protect your head, okay? I don't care what all these ex so-called experts tell you, okay? I've been I've been in law enforcement for thirty years, okay? The most important thing to protect on your body is your head, okay? I have had fr a friend who got hit with a rock and died. All right, somebody threw a rock at him. And he, it, is, it hit his head, a small rock, not a big one, hit his head. He passed out, went into a coma, and died, all right? So in a riot situation, in a situation where there's debris flying around, uh, you're going to want to protect your head. So do you carry a helmet? Well, these days, it wouldn't be far-fetched for you to wear a helmet. A uh, bicycle helmet, a uh, skateboarder's helmet. I don't care what kind of helmet it is. You see people day to day out and about wearing helmets because they're riding a scooter. Uh, they're riding skateboards. They're riding a bicycle. Uh, even people who coming home from construction sites wear a helmet. It is not a uh embarrassing thing to have for your emergencies 
when you need a help to protect your head. Okay, so all these people, oh, you know, I don't need a helmet. I live in the wilderness. I live in rural environments, this and that, and I don't need a helmet and this and that. Okay, don't worry about it. I guess everybody that's in the military who goes through the woods and go to battle and, uh, you know, all these soldiers and stuff wearing a helmet, uh, they just do it for looks, I guess. All right. Uh, Protect your head. I don't care how minimal it is. Anything is better than nothing. Here is a bump cap. Okay. It lines the inside of your baseball cap. Very inconspicuous. A minimally, this is what you might want to have. Just in case somebody throws a bottle. Somebody throws a rock. Something is better than nothing to protect your skull. It may not keep you from getting a fractured skull. But this may protect your head from getting a cut on your head. And nothing is worse than getting a cut on your head. Because when you get a smallest cut on your head, you're going to bleed like a stuck pig. Okay? Uh, You never had a cut on your head? Uh, I hope you never have to find out that I'm right. Okay, so anyway, a bump cap is the bare minimum you want to wear. Uh, ideally something like a skateboarder's helmet in a bag like this, if you could fit it in there, uh, and you should be able to fit it in here easily. Just put it in upside down like this with other stuff on inside of the helmet in the bag, and it should be able to fit in there. Okay. So when a disaster hits, you want to empty this bag out as much as you can and wear it on your persons okay first of all this bag right here contains a uh, mask with filter and uh, safety goggles okay chemical safety goggles Uh, I've done videos on this before And this protects your eyes and your respiratory system. You are absolutely no good to yourself. Absolutely no good to yourself. If debris, dust, or whatever gets in your eyes, chemicals, whatever gets in your eyes, and you can't see where you're going, okay? At that point, you are pretty much helpless, all right? You cannot go far if you cannot breathe properly. And you have to be able to breathe. And I don't care what you say. These masks with the filters will help you breathe better than if you had nothing. Watch the people when they're walking away from the disaster areas on 9-11. What do they do? They have handkerchiefs and clothes wrapped around their mouth and nose. Because why? Because they are inhaling all kinds of dust and debris. All right. This will help you significantly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but that's not going to really help you uh, 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 from nerve gas and this and that. Okay. Stop being in the La La fantasy land, okay? We're talking about real life disasters, not some chemical attack in World War III or nuclear attack, okay? This is something that is going to help you considerably in a conventional uh, situation. Yeah, but that mask don't really help you do this, do that. Okay, all right. Don't have it with you then. That's fine. <laughs> It's like uh, most people just want to argue for the argument's sake. All right. So if this can help people breathe while they're painting a car or working in the attic with fiberglass flying around and this and that, and it helps them breathe uh, fresh air or clean uh, filtered air, trust me, this will help you in a disaster situation where there is much debris in the air. Okay. Now, moving on. Sawyer Mini. Now, this is no, there's no way to really put this on you 
unless you have very large cargo pants pockets. So you may want to just keep this inside the bag, okay? But you want to take as much stuff out of the bag and put it on your persons. Why? Because ultimately, even this can get snatched away from you. Or even this can become too heavy or burdensome or irritating to carry. And you may wind up throwing it away, uh, even with all the contents in it. All right. Now, let's go further. Little extras. Okay. Uh, you, may be, uh, have, you may have to cut through the woods. A central park. A city park. Whatever. You may have to go through bushes and this and that. You may want some uh, bug spray or something that will keep the nasty little bugs from making your little journey uncomfortable. Okay? All right. Keep moving on. Uh, keep a little container with all the little goodies. All right? Uh, fire starters, uh, lighters, uh, little knickknacks that... Uh, we all talk about far as when, when you're out there uh, in the wilderness or out in the urban situation and you need this, a certain thing, uh, maybe an extra little uh, multi-tool or knife or whatever, okay? So have a little container to carry inside the bag so you can be organized to handle little knick-knack problems that require knick-knack. All right, this is a, a little pouch that you can wear on your belt. Okay, along the way, you may need a huge pocket to put stuff in. There's a little pouch that you can put stuff in and carry on your belt. Okay, um, never know what you're going to run into and what you may pick up while you're walking in order to use for your uh, survival. Okay, lighter. Okay, that could that could have gone in here. Okay, that could have gone in here. All right. Now that's uh, a knife sharpener. Doesn't really belong in there. I just had it in there because it was part of my bushcraft belt kit. Um, have a set of tools. Is What kind of tools uh, you want to carry is totally up to you. Okay. Uh, this may be just a little too much, uh, too heavy. And unnecessary because a lot of times you are not going to stop to go repair a car. Or maybe you will. Maybe you'll uh, run into somebody uh, who has car trouble but they have plenty of gas. And uh, they're like, hey, uh, my car just stopped running. Do you know anything about cars? No, I don't. But I have some tools. Maybe somebody will come along that do know about cars and boom there you go you have the tools to give to that person to say hey can you fix this person's car so we could all hitch a ride and get the hell out of here all right so there we go all right now like i said everything or most of everything should come out of this bag when the disaster hits and everything should go on your belt there you go multi-tool two tins in there with some survival stuff all right Billow, in case you have to trek all night, all day and all night, and you have to stop, build a fire, stay warm, build a shelter, whatever. All that's in here for that. And you, we have a little bit of first aid kit in there, some medicines for uh, digestive problems, pain, some bandages, a light medical kit. Or you can go full out and have... Something like this in the pouch with a real trauma uh, trauma uh, medical kit with a tourniquet and everything else. Um, and then you can keep that in this bag and take it out and wear it on your belt. It's not that heavy, okay? Trust me, it's a lot lighter than having to carry that big backpack over there. All right? So, now you have the... Bare essentials that you can't really carry on your person's back in, going back into the bag. All right. Now, you may not need a helmet 
or breathing uh, breathing a, a aid or eye protection right away. And you may not need to take this out of the backpack or, or the bag, little bag that you have. So you keep that in there. All right. And you don't want to always have this bump cap on unless you really want to. Uh, always want to protect your head. But I, I do have to warn you that on a hot day, you do get sweaty under there. So uh, you only want to use this button cap in a situation where you think you may need to protect your head. And be honest with you, keep some kind of helmet in there. And uh, it, like I said, it doesn't take up that much space. You just put it in upside down with all the stuff inside the helmet and it'll fit. And by the time, the, if the disaster hits and you take out all the stuff that you're going to put on your belt and put in your pocket and then put all the little other, other stuff, the little other stuff back in, the, the bag itself will be much, much lighter for you to carry on your back while you have most of the stuff that you need on your persons. Okay. And then you're walking and walking and then all of a sudden you find out that you have to run and you have to just... Dump this and keep going. Okay, now you're without your bag and a few things that you had in there. But most of the stuff that you need is on your belt. And trust me, uh, you want, as, as heavy as this you may think this is, uh, if you have it on your belt and you regularly put it on and walk around with it, you can do it. A policeman, even the worst shaped policeman, have about 25 to 30 pounds on his waist, on his belt. And he walks around with it on all day or works with it on all day. So if they can, if the fat donut eating cop can do it, you can do it too. So anyway. Okay, guys, uh, that's my spiel. So all of you guys who think that you have to buy a military grade survival backpack for whatever reason, um, I think, in my opinion, the best way to go is an unassuming bag like this that you can carry and no one will think that you have anything in there of value, anything of use in there. They probably think that you're going home from a basketball court or you're going home from work with all your uh, uh, leftover lunch and stuff and all that. Whatever. Not, nobody's going to look at this bag and say, damn, he's got goodies in there like a gun or, or survival stuff that I might need and try to take this from you. Okay. You wear stuff like that, guarantee somebody going to know more than likely what you're carrying inside that bag. And you you can be armed to the teeth, but you don't have eyes on the back of your head. Uh, you could be walking, then somebody come up behind you and boop, you're knocked out and they got your bag. All right. So use your head, folks, and protect your head. All right. Thanks for watching. See ya.